really excited to be here with Caroline Leone. Um, she's a colleague. I learned from her. And uh, we're going to talk about shifts to in you know sort of mindset and strategy shifts today to help you get more clients in authentic ways. Of course, we Caroline and I share those share those values. And Caroline, I, I've just really um, been amazed at your kind of your witnessing your growth over the years. Um, kind of you know like seeing your content get more and more solid and more more and more informative and helpful and and awesome over the years and i just see you as a very grounded um like you know people can learn a lot of the marketing business from you and get your support in a very grounded and compassionate way so i'm looking forward to those hopefully you know maybe some of the people watching this know who you are already uh but probably a lot of people don't so it's great for them to get to know you um anything you want to say about your background before we get started um well I want to say thank you for that generous introduction um and I learned from you I have done a lot over the years um n- no 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 I don't think so okay okay yeah um so you call yourself a business coach for conscious change makers so I yes. like that I like that quite a bit um let's jump into it I think this conversation will you know we we can yeah I think it's I think I, I'm going to really enjoy because this is the stuff that I that a lot of my audience um, needs to know or needs to be reminded of or to really take action from. So let's begin with how to think about marketing, right? Like yeah. hopefully everyone watching this knows your business is probably not going to grow. You're probably not going to get clients on, or not on a sustainable and growing basis unless you learn and do marketing well. And so I like, um, I'm just seeing some of the notes you sent me. I really like how you're reframing marketing. Share with us what that is and let's have a conversation around it. Okay, wonderful. I mean, (laughs) you can't talk about marketing with people without them, you know, that heavy energy, they kind of grow and people have this like, most people, I think it's safe to say that you work with and that I work with don't love the idea of marketing. Um, Typically my people are, like me, highly sensitive, introverted, you know, a minute because they want to change the world, not because they want to shout about themselves and their own achievements. So that's, you know, the way they think about marketing. I think there's so many misconceptions. Well, I mean, is it a misconception? Because a lot of marketing is like that. It's loud. It's noisy. It's like, you know, look at me. So one of the things that I, when people come to me, typically I'm like helping them undo what they've come to understand marketing to mean. Um, and I think of it in terms of, you know, the, the reframe I like to offer is instead of thinking about marketing to people, which just feel, you know, it's effectively selling to people, yeah. um, shift to connecting with people. What if you could just connect with the people in the world that you are best placed to serve and to support and to help? Um, and, and the other thing that I like to think around um, that is what if your marketing or your content could become an extension of your service? Because you'll, I'm sure you've heard this, but I hear all the time, like, I just want to do my thing. I just want to be able to do EFT or coaching or healing. I don't want to have to do marketing. And I think a massive shift for me, um, and I have no doubt that you helped me with this shift, is, um, is to see my marketing as an extension of my service, to see it as, you know, this is this is another way in which I help people um, versus, and I, I hear it all the time. I had someone recently get the call and they said, I need to learn how to sell or to, ex, you know, to explain to people what I do. And I was like, no, you don't. <laughs> you really don't. Um, say, say more about that. What do you mean? Well, because nobody is nobody is looking for somebody to articulately explain what it is they do. Who cares? Who cares? What people are looking for is help. They're looking for you know an, an easing of their struggle or their suffering. And so if you can do that with your you know I I, I usually refer, instead of saying marketing, I'll talk about content. And that can mean lots of things for different people. But if you can do that with your content, if you can just help people feel better or 
take action or move, take another step along that road to transformation with something that you create and put out into the world. That to me is the best marketing that you can do. Um, and it's extremely different to explaining to people what it is you do. And there's, you know, there are places for that, obviously, on the web, on, on your website and things like that. But I think a lot of people think that's what marketing is. I've got to get better at, at talking about my work or talking about what I do. And actually, you've got to get better at connecting with people, I think. I love this. Yeah, it's, there's just maybe this idea of like, there's some some magical order of words. If I just put those order of words together, and put them on my Instagram bio and my about page and whatever, then of course, and I'll have all the clients that I need. Yeah. And, um, but yeah, you're right. It's, and, and it's, especially for those who are saying, I don't want to do marketing. I want to do my work. I, I love that you said, well, marketing is your work. <laughs> that, yeah. that is part of, but that is part of the helping others. And, and it's like, if you can really demonstrate the helping others part of it, um, then that is good marketing. Yeah. So say say more. Um, just being staying on this point about not marketing to people, but to connecting with people. Say more about that. So, for example, let's say somebody. Well, usually, this is what happens. Like they've already, they maybe got trained in some modality, right? Or they yeah. they've been doing it for themselves and for for friends for for years. And now they've got this great website that they probably paid a lot of money for or spent a lot of energy. And now it's like, all right, Caroline, make this, make people, you know, come here and yeah. make people buy, <laughs> buy this thing. Yeah. So um, it's sort of like this, I, I fully formed this thing and now I got to get people interested in this thing or, or how do I find, how, how do I find, and maybe this is a separate question, but like, how do I find my people to yeah. to share this thing with so yeah. what's your response there to that well I have a fun um analogy that I use so one of the things I say is imagine that you're an unheard of artist yeah and you've <laughs> created this masterpiece right you know, right yeah incredible. you're gifted you are a completely yes. gifted artist yes. but no one's ever heard of you and right. you've created this masterpiece and you have to sell it without anyone seeing it like it's, I mean, it's impossible. You yeah. know, it's a really great painting. Honestly, you're gonna have to yeah. trust me on this. It's like it's really good. Um, yeah. it would be impossible, and it's you know, it's part joke. But that's what we try to do all the time. We mm. try to do that, you know, as coaches as healers. It's like you know, we think if we find the right way to describe the thing, people will be sold. Um, and so for me, a concept that I bring in. And it kind of speaks to a lot of the, the strategies I might then teach people is, you know, finding ways to demonstrate your expertise, finding ways to actually give people, a, you know, an, a, an example, a sense of, you know, what it is that you do rather than just talking about what it is that you do. Um, and so there's various ways I think we can demonstrate expertise, you know, a big one for me is content, um, something that, um, I think you do incredibly well. It's something that I try to do well is, you know, what we talked about early being of service within, you know, our free, our free stuff, but also there's other things. So, um, you know, gift sessions is something that I feel quite strongly about, you know, having people, and I know there's a lot of debate about, you know, giving too much away or, you know, not having firm enough boundaries or giving too much time. And I'm a big believer in, uh, as, again, especially for, I think, my people, you know, years ago, I had a client say to me, oh, I, you know, I've been, I've been telling a friend, a business friend of mine about this gift session idea. And she thinks I'm mad and giving away my time for free. And, you know, it doesn't make sense and I should be charging. And I said, does, does your friend have a successful business? And she said, yeah, it is actually quite successful. And I said, how, how has she done it? And she said, oh, she's got a podcast. She loves her po podcast. She spends hours on a podcast every week. And, you know, she really consistent with it. And I said, that's her gift session. <laughs> that's her generous generous freebie is another way I would I yeah. would talk about that's her generous freebie I don't want to do a podcast I, I yeah. you know for me when I was right. building my business I wanted to be in conversation with people and it's funny actually because recently I've been really sitting with this 
it is about conversations you know it feels it's like content and conversations I feel like that's the, almost the magic formula and those conversations could be a gift session they could be a virtual coffee date they could be another one that I love to do is market research calls or audience research calls where I like to do a 30 30 so you spend 30 minutes asking questions and then you spend 30 minutes coaching them so it's you know part gift part you know and people like that because it feels fair you know I, I'm giving you something and so I, yeah. I'm, I'm okay to accept the gift of of coaching for the second half but essentially it comes down to connect it comes down to connection comes down to um being in conversation yeah. and so in answer to the question where you said you know how do people you know the question that people ask how do I find my people um again I think a, a place we get tripped up or people get tripped up is you know I've got to I've got to have the perfect niche I've got to have the perfect niche and I've got to have and I've got to call in these you know specific people and then sometimes they just won't put stuff out because they can't get to that place where they feel like they've got the perfect niche um and a big thing I talk about is like play with it experiment with you know a niche for now I call it you know having a niche for now and so it might be if you're like, like I'd, re I'd really love to talk to you know women in their 40s who are struggling with stress you know to put something out to your network and that could be friends and family if it's early on and you know if you've got more of an audience it can be wider and say I'd love to either offer a gift have get my be in a conversation um with this particular and be really specific so even if you don't feel like this is my niche and I want to change my entire website and have a name that is specifically for this you can do a market research campaign in that in that area and you can call those specific people in um but yeah essentially just it comes down to it comes down to conversations and in those conversations the more you know I have one colleague who really built her business on coffee dates she really thrived in those you know she had lots of conversations with colleagues and it would lead to podcast interviews and I like the odd coffee date, but I'm much more in my zone of genius if I can coach someone, if I can be, if I can demonstrate my expertise. That's where I feel comfortable. It's like I'm giving you something I can, I, you know. So, yeah. That's really cool. Wow. There's a lot here. Um, first, I'm already seeing a a, a new uh, acronym of CCC. <laughs> I, I love acronyms. I can't help it. I'm just, it's how my brain works. Like, and, um, Connection through content and conversations there we go um and okay so a couple of couple of things one is you know the person who had a successful business due to a podcast will be like oh therefore podcasts must be the way yeah. to go and then of course they start a podcast and oh my god it's really really hard to get people to listen to a podcast it's even harder than getting people to watch uh watch watch a video or at least getting clients from from videos versus pod anyway um but yeah some people whatever their genius and their joy is their genius yeah. and their joy it's like there are so many ways to have to create content and to have conversations like, like you said coffee dates versus coaching versus market research by the way it, you might be interested like i did some market research <laughs> with my folks on the term market research and we came to market discovery mm -hmm. as a more pleasant term so I've been using that term market discovery now for basically market research, yeah. the same idea. But I, I'd love to, because I, I believe so much in market discovery, market research as well, um, because I feel like in the conversation of being with someone, hearing about what they're really yearning for, what they're really seeking, what they've tried and hasn't worked, what they, uh, why this problem makes makes a difference for why why it matters for them or why this goal matters for them, et cetera. Like we become naturally compassionate, empathetic, uh, em empathic, um, and caring. Naturally caring about what they actually want, and naturally that starts to shape our offers uh, so that it's more meeting people where they're at. So I'm really curious. Um, say more about how you would recommend that people get more market discovery conversations. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, when you talk, I wonder if I do it. It's like, I'm sure we do do it differently, but of course. Yeah. That's why I, I want to hear how, how I you, suppose how you I, it. I do it. Um, I, so when it's, when it really serves me, when I find it really useful is to do it when I'm thinking about creating something. So, you know, if everybody says, 
you know, every time a client says to me, I'm thinking about creating this new offer, what do you think? And it's like, it doesn't matter what I think. What did, you know, what do your people think? Um, and one of the things, you know, sometimes also when I recommend, I call it, I alternate between market research and audience research because audience is talking to the people who are already there. Market can be much broad, broader than that. Might be looking at competitors or colleagues, you know. Um, so, um, and people are like, I know, I already know what I need to do. That's often, you know, I, there's a reluctance sometimes to do it. And, and for me, audience research is is almost um, a selfish endeavor sometimes because, yes. Um, of course, I want to understand, but I found when I do um, audience research, if I'm thinking about creating something and I then get on calls with people and some of the questions will be open, like, you know, what is your greatest struggle in this area? Or, But then I might go a bit de deeper in, you know, what would the perfect offering look like? And, you know, as I'm shaping something um, and I find <laughs> I've done a, I've done a round recently. And what I found was two things happened. My enthusiasm and my excitement for what I was thinking about creating skyrocketed. Um, whereas before I was like, I probably should create something on the topic of content. You know, it was, it, it felt more like a should. I knew people needed it. I knew it was something I had a lot of skill in, but until I got on those calls with people, I didn't feel as excited about it. So that was, that's, I really loved that element of it. It was very validating. It was like, oh yes, there was lots of things that I realized I was thinking correctly about what I was creating and other ideas that I hadn't considered uh, you know and and that was wonderful the other thing that happens nearly every time I've done audience research and it happens for my clients too is people sign up to the thing that I'm doing the re research about it's one of the greatest ways of reaching I think of reaching ideal clients because basically what I'll do is put a call out to the person who I think is perfect for this program, because that's who I want to talk to. I want to understand what my ideal client needs from the thing that I'm considering creating. Um, and in doing that, suddenly I find myself in, you know, with 10 conversations on the calendar with my perfect client for the thing that I'm creating. And so that obviously, I mean, not always, but, you know, typically several of those people will be like, I'm in. And I'll say maybe at the end of the call, you know, this has been super helpful. I'm going to use your input as I, you know, create the sales page. And would you like me to let you know when the sales page is live? And, and of course, people will say, yeah, sure, that would be great. So so there's there's all the, you know, the empathy that you talk, all of that's wonderful. But for some people, I, I have to almost convince them there's great benefits to you. It's it It's really affirming and it's really effective at connecting with your ideal people, as well as, of course, you know, when I sat down to write my re most recent sales page, I had the words. I literally had the words that needed to go on the page because people had just in these calls told me exactly what their struggle was with yeah. the topic. So, yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan. That's that's <laughs> this is great. Um, one of the concerns that I always have with market research calls is. Um, if the person doing the research, let's say I'm doing the research, I'm talking to a potential client. If I frame the thing around, do you think my offer is good? Mm. Um, it tends to be that they would say, yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. It looks pretty good. You know? Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. Yeah. I think some people would really like it and they're being polite. Yeah. They're being validating because, well, the people you and I both tend to attract are very empathic people and very, very polite, courteous people. So they tend to do that. And then I get like, oh, look, I got I just talked to several people and they all think this is pretty good. And then <laughs> and then I launched this thing. And I'm like, even the people who told me it was good. To, so do you ever find that dynamic to be true? Or do you how and and or or not? And if so, what do you what's your advice about that? Yeah, so I, what I do is I don't give, I don't tell them initially. So the question is kind of, we do, you know, we have a few questions that dig into what's your greatest struggle? What would it mean to you to, you know, overcome this? Like, what would the impact be of not getting traction with this thing? Um, and then I'll say, if you were to get, you know, support, what would the perfect solution look like for you? And sometimes people- That's actually people, one of my favorite yeah. questions in the market discovery. Yeah, it's like, like have them create or have them just name some of the things they would, they would love to see in yeah. something like this. Yeah. And then if people, 
are a bit stuck. You know, I might say, for example, would it be one-to-one or group? Would it be self-paced? You know, I might give them a little bit of guidance. And then once they've shared with me, I will say, I mean, what was really wonderful and affirming in my last round was most people described the thing that I was creating. So it was like, great. <laughs> um, and then I and then I shared a bit, you know, and said, you know, this is what I'm thinking. Is there anything you would add to that or anything you would change? Um, Another question that I think people, it's worth just pulling out is I ask people what they'd be prepared to pay. Um, And one of the things I always say is don't tell me theoretically what you'd be prepared to pay. Tell me what you can afford. Because, you know, and I realized that in my most recent round, there, there are two prices. There's a price that they think it's worth and that they would love to pay you if they could afford it because they're kind people, as we've said. And then there's a price that they can afford to pay. So I always ask them to make that distinction um, also because I think that's, you know, I'd rather know what people can afford versus what people would love to pay me if money was no object. This is interesting because have you found that their afford price is what you were thinking about or have you found that? Yeah, really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's really great because in the past, um, in the past, I have found that their afford price turned out to be much, much lower mm. than what I was able to sell it for. Um, and, and it's not necessarily that that person who told me this price ended up buying for a lot more. Not, it's not that, but it's other people in my audience ended up buying it for, for a lot more. Now, of course, as you and I both, we don't, neither of us price gouge our people we yeah. in fact if anything we, we price things lower than most yeah. of our peers so it's still that but but i find so yeah it's interesting because i find that well of course i mean every audience is different but i find that um maybe maybe your audience actually maybe your audience is more attuned to a reasonable price because when i talk to my audience it's been a while since i've asked some literal price numbers but 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 when i did i was like oh yeah i don't know if i can build a business at this audience size with that price yeah (laughs) well and I I have I have open conversations with my people on that in terms of I could do something for that price but it won't be the perfect solution (laughs) you know it's not gonna that's good I like that and that's something you know yeah that's something that I've also been working with in my business because I got into the habit of doing you know three four part workshops for what people typically charge for one 60 minute workshop and then people were like I want more implementation time I want more and I'd be like oh my goodness I literally couldn't put more so then I've decided okay I'll do smaller workshops for the you know the right price and then I'll do these smaller group programs that are you know are a bit more of an investment so yeah it's it's an interesting one that's cool that's cool well um as we wrap up anything else you want to kind of before we talk about your um what you're offering at this point like any other guidance that you want to offer before we yeah yeah i mean in the notes i sent over to you the the kind of final point which does segue nicely into my offer is that i think a dis- a common distraction for people is is social media you know it's that like i've got to be on social media all the time and I've got to you know and this piece around Mark I think social media lends itself much more to the to the stereotypical idea or notion of marketing versus you know connection that's my that's my perception so lots of people have incredible connections and meaningful outreach yeah that's that's what social media is supposed to be but it we is turn it into a, a yeah bullhorn. I find you it know. I find, yeah. yeah, so a bit, so a big thing for me, you know, one of the things that I, I try and bring people back to, I mean, and that's one distraction, social media, there's this, you know, web design and, you know, all the, yeah. all the things that we think we should be doing and having the perfect opt-in and all of those things. Um, I always come back to what I said at the beginning of the call, you know, co- like content and outreach. A question that I, I've asked myself many times over the years is how did, what were the more successful businesses um, before the internet? Like how were they successful? And, and I've come up with, you know, great service um, and relationships. You know, so I always think of like your local butcher who will throw in a few extra sausages, you know, or like 
and is friendly and will chat to you for 10 minutes when you go. And I, I, I like to bring that back to online business because we forget, we think, oh my goodness, I've got to be dancing on TikTok or whatever it is. The yeah. Kids are doing <laughs> and, right. Um, yeah. yeah. So I, I love to bring it back to that kind of focus on the principles versus yeah. the tact, the tactics totally, that come totally. and go. I so appreciate that because truly as techniques change, t- technologies change, it's so easy to forget those first principles that always have worked forever and will continue yeah. to work forever. And people people lose sight of those. So thank you. Thank you for bringing that back. Okay. So right now, what are you launching right now or offering right now that I'm excited to hear more? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so I'm running my first small group program. Um which is wait what do you like, mean your first wait first one no you well i have a big i have a big group program i have my year-long mastermind right. but okay. this is yeah. like a seven week live group oh program. got it okay now so this is so how is it different from a course good question so it's more it's well i'll tell you so it's seven yeah, sure. weeks it's mm-hmm. called content that connects nice so the idea is it's it's specifically for people who love writing essentially okay. because yeah. I realized I've taught about content for years and I've always been like my way is writing but your way might be this yeah, right, right. It's like... I just want to help people with writing because that's my favorite thing. that's awesome yeah so it's for people who love writing but haven't yet managed to turn that love of writing into into a way of sustaining their business or reaching their yes. idle people yes um and it's part teaching so I'll be sharing my strategy I have a system um for you know repurposing and promotion and heavily influenced by you of course and (laughs) um and then there's also um you know how to write content in a way I I, there's a piece I haven't written it yet but it's in my head of the difference between content copy and writing ah yeah I like that because they're because they're distinct and often people get them mixed up so they have beautiful creative writing that they're publishing every week and it's not they don't understand why they're not getting clients from it or right. all their content is really copy yeah, and it's not connecting with people. And yeah, then, yeah. and then there's content. So it's yeah. about like, and together we'll write, there'll be co-working sessions, teaching sessions. And then the idea is that over the course of seven weeks, you build up a month's worth of content and then we'll implement the strategy I use. I have a schedule. And yes. A, right. So they the actually get the and... experience of it so that they can keep, keep doing exactly. it afterwards. So the Fantastic. idea is they go into 2025. Gosh, I can't believe it. Yes, know. or whatever year um, they're, they're watching this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, with it all set up and ready to go. Yeah. Sweet. That's a that's a very, um, well, grounded program. And um, yeah, so I'm sure I'll put the link below. And, and, and whenever people are watching this, of course, check out Caroline's website. It has lots of great, great content, really helpful stuff. And... Thank you. Thank you, Caroline, for the work you do and how you do it. Thank you. Always a pleasure talking to you, Josh. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.